Well, hello and welcome everyone to the first ever Sonoma County Career Fest Creative Arts Panel. I am Nicole Kinsella, the College and Career Counselor at Piner High School and the moderator of this session. Tracy Batchelder, the College and Career Counselor from Santa Rosa High School, will be monitoring the Q&A during the panel. We also have Chris Catelli and Elizabeth Arntz from Sonoma County Office of Education helping out. I want to thank them and all, and all of you, the panelists and the attendees for being here today. And before we get started with our speakers, I want to let you know that the chat has been disabled, but I want to encourage you to use the Q&A to ask questions of any of the panelists. Um, also, Tracy will be adding a link to the attendance form in the chat towards the end of the panel for students who are attending this for class credit. All right, I am excited to bring you some special guests today. So we have Cesar Cruz from Desire to Inspire Studios. We have James Ford Murphy from Pixar Animation Studios. We have Wayne Ingram from Link Creative and Kirsten Kennedy from 2K Games. So Kirsten, if you could go ahead and get us started by briefly introducing yourself and give us a short overview of your company and what you do in your role, um, you can also include the educational path you took to get to where you are now. Hey guys, good morning. Um, I, um, I'm excited to see so many people here. Um, my name is Kirsten Kennedy. I'm an, exec an executive producer at 2K Games. I've been working in video games uh, for 25 years, more than 25 years. Um, I have worked at places like Ubisoft and Rockstar Games and EA, um, and I'm at 2K right now, and I work primarily with um, the studio Firaxis Studios, which uh, they make uh, Civilization, the Civilization series and the XCOM series. Um, <clears throat> in my role, uh, or how I got here really was, um, I went to college for a psychology degree <laughs> and um, spent a lot of my, uh, a lot of my time in high school and college playing video games and um, got into the industry um, through um, the quality assurance path, which is the testing path. Um, and so since then I've transitioned into production, which is a lot of project management, organizing people um, and making sure that we make the quality game that we want to make um, in the time that we want to make it. Um, so that's just a brief overview for you. Thank you so much, Kristen. Um, Cesar, if you could give a short overview of your company, your role, and educational path you took. Yes. Um, well, hello there. My name is Cesar Cruz. I'm director of videography at Desire to Inspire Studios. And part of my uh, sort of journey to getting to this type of work has sort of started since I graduated from L.C. Allen High School back in 2009, and then going on to Sonoma State University, graduated with my degree in communications, and then working in the nonprofit world. Um, I think ultimately it was interesting to get introduced in a, a nonprofit organization such as 10,000 Degrees. That was a great experience for me to connect with more people in the community and the work that people were doing all around. And through that process, um, obtaining my communications degree allowed me to really become versatile in the works that I was doing. Um, I became very interested in video from pretty much like since my freshman year doing short videos, commercials, things like that. And then ultimately, after connecting with the nonprofits in the community, I was able to connect with this organization uh, about two years ago, uh, Desire to Inspire Studios, to do amazing work in the community. Basically, people helping people through amazing visuals by doing commercial work for nonprofits, by doing uh, fundraisers campaigns, and also doing more uh, just uh, big, bigger work now uh, at the national level. Uh, we're currently working with the MS Society, uh, doing some amazing work on sailboats. Um, and just getting to work with camera equipment out there, it's just been an incredible journey now. And I'm expanding my focus now into doing drone photography and, and just drone capturing. Um, so part of our efforts is just giving people the versatility to learn how to do this work. So if you're a student interested in doing this work, let me know. Um, we take all levels of expertise um, and we're here to support students at every level. Thank you. Great, thank you, Cesar. Um, Wayne, if you could go ahead and briefly introduce yourself and give a short overview of your company and your career path. Sure. Uh, Wayne Ingraham, um, the uh, founder and creative director of Link Creative, a graphic and web company up in Santa Rosa, California. Um, I've been doing web and graphic design for 24 years now. Um, how I kind of got into it is my mom has been a computer programmer since the very tail end of the 70s. And uh, so nerd gene kind of got passed along. Um, and uh, she actually introduced me to the uh, the 
internet before it was the World Wide Web. So uh, that was really cool and it, it got me excited. Um, but I, I saw a lot of uh, websites that were cool and some that were kind of garbage. So uh, it got me excited and, and interested in um, how how uh, they look different. So I just kind of really got into the code and uh, started learning on my own. And um, I, I did some college, uh, but um, no degree yet. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, James, so I think most of us have heard about Pixar, um, but if you could please introduce yourself and share what you do in your position and the educational path you took to get there. Sure. So I've been at Pixar now for 25 years. As of April 1st, it's my 25th anniversary there. And in that time, I've done a lot of different things. So, you know, I'm, I'm an animator by trade. And first film I animated on was A Bug's Life. And I've been a supervising animator and, you know, directing animator. And then for, for a middle part of my career, for like five years, I, I got into management and I oversaw art, animation and story. And I did that for a while. Like, OK, that was that was good. And then I want to get back into the creative. So I pitched a bunch of ideas for short films and I got to make a short film called Lava that was in front of Inside Out. So I wrote and directed that. And then. Uh, most recently, I'm writing and directing in the promo group. So kind of working with, you know, kind of the marketing of the films and, and stuff like that. And my path is kind of an odd path. I, I went to Marquette University. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I went to Marquette University in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and studied journalism. But while I was in school, I, I ended up doing a comic strip and kind of fell in love with drawing and writing and eventually never went to art school. I, I got my, I got a, my first job was at Jockey Underwear in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And I eventually got into 2D animation in Chicago. And then I heard about Pixar and applied 26 years ago. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. So Prasar, um, you kind of spoke to this a little bit, but when we met a few years ago, your work was in education. Um, and so I'm curious, what caused you tra to transition to your career, your current career? Yeah, I, I think uh, part of my effort in learning how we can provide bigger messages and connecting more people to resources, uh, ultimately led to this world of sort of media and how media can, can influence bigger decisions and how you can create pretty much a big uh, just goal to be met by organizations to be able to say, hey, we're able to accomplish our goal thanks to this campaigns, we're able to do this type of work. And so while influencing some of the nonprofits through their work, even last year through this whole process of, of just COVID, uh, we were able to fundraise closer to about $2.5 million for nonprofits all over the North Bay. And so being able to do that is just super incredible and rewarding and be able to do that at a massive scale now and continuing on, especially right now as we're doing live stream, live stream has become some big part of our business. We used to be an event-based uh, business and now we've really turned virtual. And so having that versatility has really allowed me to do so much more now. So yeah, it's part of it. Awesome, thank you. Um, all right, so this next question is for all the panelists. So um, what sparked your interest in your career and what do you love most about what you do? Um, and James, if you could go ahead and get us started. I'd say what sparked my interest was just, you know, as I mentioned, just curiosity about trying to figure out what I wanted to do and being being willing to take chances and follow follow things and see where they led, you know, and so kind of how I got to Pixar, as I mentioned, so I studied journalism, did a comic strip, first job I get, I, I didn't have any art experience, first job I got was in an art, art director at an in-house agency for Jockey Underwear, I did that for about a year, wasn't crazy about it, but in the in the in the mean at night I was drawing and I and I did this this drawing. It was a bunch of caricatures that I ended up um, getting printed and I, I mailed so many of them out. I was able to leave Jockey and move to Chicago and freelance. So I did that for a year, and then didn't like that so much. And I was like, I wanted to get in, into animation, but I didn't have money to go to school. So I knocked on the door of an animation studio in Chicago that I just started painting cells, and then they saw I could draw, it and I ended up kind of learning animation there. And then while I was there, I heard about Pixar and I sent my stuff out to Pixar and was lucky enough to, to get, get hired back at the time when people really didn't study animation. It was, it was just a ragtag bunch of individuals that um, kind of all came to the studio. So I would say that's kind of 
what I, what I love and, and what I do love about what I get to do is making stuff and working with amazing people that you are so much, I find that the collaborative quality of working at Pixar in that environment makes your work so much better than you could do just on your own. And, and that's what I really love and to see where collaboration can take you, you know, and, and it's not only where it takes the work, but the, the experience that you have of working with these individuals is, it's like these little love affairs that you have with people that is just so wonderful, you know, and oftentimes I can remember not only the, the thing that you worked on, but the experience that you have. And that's what I love. Uh, I love that so much about, um, you know, our career, you know, being happiness in a career is who we work with, right? And having a good team. So I love that. Thank you. Thank you, James. Um, Wayne, how about for you? What sparked your interest and what do you love about what you do? Sure. Yeah. Uh, similarly, uh, curiosity got me really interested in it. Um, when I started doing it, it was definitely not something that I instantly thought, oh, I can do a career of this. It was just this is fascinating. I want to learn more about it. And it was still new. So you saw all the potential that it could be. Um, but then as I was doing different websites and different projects for just friends or, or things that I, I had a passion about, um, I started realizing that here I am creating something from nothing, right? It didn't exist the day before. And that was really exciting uh, to have that. And then also the, the constant creative uh, or problem solving that you'd have to do and come up with unique um, uh, solutions to, to different problems. And once you start doing that and you feel really good, like, oh, I, I solved this really well, um, you start kind of wanting to do more and more. And uh, then you start talking to different businesses and you realize that they all have common problems, but they all have very unique problems to their industry size or um, whether it's a product or service that they sell. So that just, uh, it, I, I love waking up, going to work and then going, okay, bring on all the new problems that, uh, that I get to think of creatively. Yeah, that's great. Problem solving brain. <laughs> that's great. Um, thank you. So um, Kirsten, I would imagine a lot of the teenagers attending this panel today would be quite interested in um, being able to work in the video game industry. Um, can you please share how you became interested in this career and what you love about what you do? Why you love what you do? So I, I look, when I was in high school, I didn't actually think there would, there were people who like, I, it didn't connect to me in my head that people made video games and that I could do that. Um, it was only through kind of like, making friends on the internet. You're not supposed to do that though. Um, that I actually realized it was a career path and thought, you know, I actually really, really enjoy games so much that I think I could be good at this, but I don't really have a lot of skills. So I worked through um, like the end of high school and college kind of trying to volunteer effectively as an intern. Um, for you know, local companies or for companies that I could connect with on AOL, if you guys know what that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I think mostly the reason that I was so curious about going into video games is it was the thing that just held my personal interest and I had felt so much um, connection with a community in, in um, games earlier in my life that I wanted to continue to remain in that space in whatever capacity I could. Um, and um, I think very similar to James, the, the reason that I love what I do is the people that I get to work with. There are so many interesting and creative approaches to solve problems, solve the same problem, but differently, um, maybe solve, um, uh, you know, conflict or, concern um, within a creative space. There's so many different ways that you can go about it. And um, I have the, I've had the opportunity and the pleasure to work with some fantastic people in the industry, um, most of whom don't really get any recognition, but like the team effort that is required to make a game is um, large. <laughs> you, need, you need a lot of time and a lot of effort and kind of everybody being in it together and wanting a game to be good or great. Um, it's a really nice atmosphere 
And um, it's really, it's really rewarding to, to work with such crazy ideas coming from such amazing people. So. Great. Thank you. Um, all right. So Bazaar, um, you kind of already talked a little bit about this, like what sparked your interest in videography, but if you could just tell us what you love about your work. Yeah, uh, I think ultimately, I think just like some people mentioned before, uh, problem solving is a very big thing. Um, I think taking an idea from something that's just ultimately like right in your head or you're talking to someone about something they're interested in creating and then having the ability to bring that to life and then trust the process along the way with the people you're collaborating with is a huge, huge just ability to be able to create something unique and on, on, only possible in the moment that you're doing it. Because that's the other thing, too, is like not one take is the same and not one energy is the same. So you're creating something that's continuously changing and evolving. And so while working with experts and people who are doing the work, I'm learning a lot from people who have been in the industry before and have seen the shifts now. And the fact that we have so much access to equipment, to things like that through our phones and things like that, even to just get started at that level is a great way to evolve and become more involved in this craft. Uh, and so what I really love about it, it keeps growing. I mean, even just yesterday, Apple has been releasing new equipment, new uh, cameras and new computers to op operate. So it's, it's incredible. Awesome, great. Yeah, I love that. Trust the process. That was a, kind of a motto of one of my professors in grad school. So great, <laughs> love that. Um, great, well, this next question is um, for Wayne and James. What high school classes do you feel most relate to your profession? And are there any classes that you wish you had taken that you didn't? And um, we'll go ahead and start with you, Wayne. Sure. So um, if you're into, if you want to get into programming, uh, definitely math. It's, it's weird. There's, there's uh, every great programmer I, I've, I've met seems to have either gotten a degree or just really is into math um, and history, surprisingly. Um, but uh, I, I think it helps teach logic and just how you solve different problems. Um, if you're into design, uh, surprisingly, uh, I found a yearbook was really good to get into in high school. Um, it allowed me to do a lot of layout um, uh, designs and really play around with what I, was my style and mess up a lot of times um, and learn from that. Um, and then we had a very unique class in Novato High School called Futures, and it was in place of uh, 12th grade English. And it was really cool because um, it, it's a unique thing that teacher uh, I pitched it to the school board and they're like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, but we, we did a lot of just like, Hey, if um, they were to come up with a pill tomorrow that allowed people to live to 160 years old, what would be the repercussions? And it got you to think very creatively and just um, think of different things that you wouldn't normally. And I, I loved that class, even though, it was a senior class, so a lot of people just kind of were like, easy A, I'm going to just, you know, hang out and do whatever. But I was like, ooh, what's the next question? So that's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and James, how about for you? For me, I really didn't have any classes in high school that kind of influenced me. You know, I went to went to school in Detroit and my my parents didn't really support the idea of that I could that making a living as an artist was even a you know, an, an option. So when I went to school, as I mentioned, I studied journalism and journalism to me at that time where I went to school was the most creative thing I, I could do. But I always had this interest in drawing, but I'd never really, I maybe took one art class, you know, in, in high school. But when I got to college, I started drawing a comic strip. And so I kind of taught myself not only through learning the disciplines of drawing, but by having a comic strip, it required me coming up with two ideas, two original ideas on my own, and then having to draw those and deliver them on time while I was balancing all my, all my work and also playing rugby. I, you know, I played rugby at the time, but so for me, and then, you know, as I, I, as I mentioned, I came out, didn't really have art, got a job as an art director. So I've kind of learned it on my own. And I think in doing so, what I think I bring to it is I just have a curiosity and a passion and a real desire and a work ethic to try to learn something. And that, I think that's what I've learned. And, and I've, and I always try to teach students or say to students that 
regardless of whether you have, you should go for the classes for sure. You know, and, and if they're offered to you, go for art school, but go for the stuff that you, you're interested in and try to find out who you are, what's unique about you, what's your personal taste and how can you, it's, it's come up, to, you know, a few times today. How can you get that out of your head and out on a piece of paper or on a piece of film or in, in any way? I think that's our job as humans is to try to produce something that only we can produce because of our unique perspective on something. And then it's the discipline of, and the hard part is how do you get it out of you? Whether it's writing a song or if it's painting a painting or making a short film. But to me, it's all about passion, desire, curiosity, and discipline. Uh, and, and if you are lucky enough to be have these classes in front of you, go for what you're interested in and, and, and pursue it with the passion and the desire that, you know, that, that give it everything you have. Pour your heart and soul into it. Great, thanks. Yeah, love that. Great advice. <laughs> Um, so Kirsten, this question is for you. So um, what are some of the careers associated with the gaming industry? Careers, you guys, there are so many. Um, I, let's talk about the, so there's a couple of different like areas of the game industry, right? There are people who like make the game and then there's people who basically sell the game. Uh, there's a lot involved in both of those sides. Um, to make the game, you need artists, right? You need concept artists so that you know what your game's gonna look like. You need environment modelers, you need character modelers, you need animators, um, you need visual effects artists, um, you need people who are good at lighting. Um, all sorts of things that kind of tie into what James was saying. Not all of these have to be like through um, an art school or a college or anything like that. There are plenty of people that I work with who have taught themselves or have engaged with community programs to learn more about them. Um, there are programmers, there are special programmers, there's network programmers, there's rendering programmers. Rendering programmers make everything show up on the screen. Um, there's gameplay programmers. They're the ones who make it so that what you play is fun. There's designers. Designers are narrative designers, so they talk, so they do story. Um, there's level designers, so what you play in a specific space in a video game has been designed by somebody, so the path you take through a level. Um, <clears throat> there's a QA team, so they test the game and make sure that um, it doesn't crash all the time when you play it. Um, there's producers who organize the whole team and try to get everybody facing the same direction and going towards the same goal. Um, there's all sorts on a development team to make a game. And that also includes support staff. So people who are admin assistants or people who are receptionists or people who are writers or people who are um, kind of, you don't think of them as like, ooh, they contribute to the creative process, but they enable the, the team to make the game. So people who support all of the facilities in the building as well. There's mocap teams, there's all sorts. Um, in publishing, same thing, there's all sorts of things. There's a production side of it as well to keep all the trains running on time. Uh, there's people who specialize in contracts to engage outsourcing or independent contractors. Um, there's a legal team uh, <laughs> to write those contracts. Uh, there's a finance team, a marketing team. They get to make all of the art that you guys see when people are, you know, like when a new game is coming out, all the art um, and all the creative that gets um, put in the public space. Um, they were working with influencers and Twitch streamers. And so it's not just limited to like company folks as well. We do engage a lot of independent folks. Um, there's a lot. Is, is the biggest, is the best summary. Um, takes a lot of people to um, enable games to get out the door. Yeah, sounds like it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I have one last question for all of you. So if you could really quickly, and a lot of you already touched on this, but um, you know, what are like the skills that you rely on in your position? Um, so um, if you guys could just talk about that, like, and how, I guess just a little bit of like how you started to develop the skills. And you guys all did talk about that. So just want to briefly just talk about some very specific skills. And Wayne, why don't we get started with you? 
Sure. Um, so I actually went to 16 different schools. So uh, adaptability was actually a, a great skill because there's, you know, times you're at the lunchroom with your tray in a whole new world and you're like, uh oh, <laughs> where do I sit? Um, so you learn to make friends, you learn to, um, you know, what works for you, what doesn't. Um, and yeah, it, I, I think that adaptability is, is really a crucial skill in, in, I guess, anything really. Um, it just teaches you to um, go with the flow, learn how to, uh, you know, grow thick skin and, um, and, you know, be creative and solve problems that way, I guess. Great. Thank you. And um, Cesar, how about for you? Yeah, um, I think ultimately for us, it's like the ability to plan. Planning is so key, um, especially right now while I'm filming out in boats, um, understanding the weather, really figuring out the location, why, how the air is flying, like how the air is moving, um, and really ultimately being able to have a solid script that you can rely on at all times and then somebody to turn to. So everybody has a role and the ability to collaborate, but keeping this mindset of like, hey, it's okay, it's gonna take a little bit of time and having that patience is gonna be super key. I mean, you have to really just kind of work with the process. Again, uh, most of the time, most of us have this idea that it's like, oh, it's just done in one deal. But oftentimes like a three minute video can take literally almost two weeks just to get done right. Um, and that's the ability to think creatively, but also have a shot list. For me, my shot lists are so important so that I can actually creatively have a script ready for the person and they know what to do in the next part. Um, so collaborating with people and making that happen is super important. So yeah, that's what it's all about. Thanks. Thanks, Cesar. James, how about for you? For me? Yeah. I, mean, I would say, I've touched on a few of these things. I'll just kind of re reiterate. Collaboration is huge. You know, I think as Christine said, it takes so many people to make these movies. And when you see the movie, you shouldn't even think how many people made the movie because it, it just, you, 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 get, you get sucked in. Um, there, there's a creative ec ecosystem at Pixar that I think is a fundamental way that, and it's, it's just creating an environment where it's okay to be vulnerable with your ideas. You, you know, it's not ready to be shown, but everybody knows that and that you, you can give very effective critiquing and you have to be open to that and you have to be able to give, give notes in a way that notes can be heard. And I think that's really essential. Um, Cesar touched on trusting, trusting the process is a huge thing. And it's like, what does that even mean? And I think trusting the process is ha having the determination to roll with the punches when things don't work because things don't work 99% of the time. And it's that perseverance is that perseverance of trusting the process that if you never give up, the process means it's going it's, it's going to work, but you just can't give up and hopefully you have the time to never give up. And I think the last thing is just the, the passion and the work ethic and the hard work to always try to be the best. You, you may not always be the best, but you always got to try to be the best and to always put in that effort, no matter what it is, even if it's like some menial task, if you can do a menial task really well, people will go, oh, well, give them even something better, give them another thing. So whatever it is, go be the best, try to be the best at it and you'll be surprised where it leads you. You know, don't say, it's like, oh, that's beneath me. Just show that it's beneath you by hitting it out of the park and see where it leads you. Absolutely. And I love that about vulnerability. It's so true. It's really the stronger person who puts himself out there and just, you know, be vulnerable. It's risk taking is, is important if we want to grow. So thank you. And Kirsten, but for you, I mean, you've also talked about this, but what would you say just like some specific skills that you really needed to develop for this career? Um, I think fundamentally it's, it has a lot to do with your, your people skills. You have to be able to talk to people and people of different um, points of view and people of different expertise. There will be trying to get a creative project together. Like I kind of mentioned, there are so many different facets and so many different expertise that have to come together and they all come from a specific point of view um, and in allowing space for that. I think part, like the way that I started developing those skills was trying to understand in my first roles in quality assurance, like what's important and who needs to know about these bugs that happen to be in the, in the game that I was working on. And 
um, and understanding what was going on with the team, why it wasn't gelling, why something wasn't working together and being able to kind of like talk with them about that and have like a broader conversation because um, just being able to listen to people and understand where they're coming from. I think fundamentally that is boiled down to listen to people and understand where they're coming from, or at least provide them the space and attempt to understand where they're coming from um, yeah. is super important. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Yes. Love that. All right. Well, um, thank you all. And before we move on to the Q and A, um, I want to remind the students to complete the attendance form. Um, the link I believe is now in the chat or it will be shortly. Um, and then I am going to ask um, Tracy Batchelder to come in and um, unmute herself and ask some questions from the Q&A. Great. Um, so we have a lot of great questions from students. Um, so we're not going to get through all of them, but I know uh, some of the panelists are answering them as we speak. Um, but one of the things, and, and James already touched on this, so I'm going to go to the other three panelists for that because James is really talking about perseverance and, and you know, trusting the process, really making that effort, you know, hard work, trying to be the best, all those sort of things. And one of the questions in the um, Q and A was, you know, what are some of the main your what were some main struggles you faced, and and how did you get through them? So, to the other three, um, if you can just you know, think back uh, on some, you know, some situation that was tough and, and how did you get through that? How'd you persevere? Uh, I'm I, sorry, Kirsten, I, want to go first. <laughs> so um, the video games industry is a little bit of, um, it's young, right? And so we don't have our footing um, entirely across the board. So some of the main struggles tend to be things like, I saw that somebody had asked a question about crunch. Uh, I've worked on teams where I have worked an insane amount of hours. Absolutely. Um, it's not representative of the entire industry, though. So some of the main struggles have to do with like generally either studios get shut down and you have to go find a new job or um, you have to work really long hours or you think you have to work really long hours um, <clears throat> to prove yourself. I think personally, work smart. <laughs> uh, not work long, um, try to keep yourself organized so that you focus um, in on trying not to sacrifice your own life um, outside of work to a company or to a project. Um, that doesn't mean like do things half, like that means when you're there, dedicate every second of your effort. Um, but trying to get through like times where we had serious amounts of crunch or a studio getting closed down, you just pick yourself up and say, okay, well, I'm going to keep doing this and um, try to find a new path, being agile and, and being flexible with problem solving for, for your own kind of career path. Um, I don't know if that's helpful. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. And, um, and Wayne, how about you? I mean, what, uh, what struggles have you faced along the way? So, so I've worked on over a thousand projects and I, I'd say uh, in, in bulk, uh, they've all been fun to work with, uh, but occasionally you work with um, people who might not value uh, what you do or uh, may, may just think of you as a pixel monkey, right? And they demand that you do it the way they want to do or have it done uh, regardless of what, um, design theories or uh, UX principles kind of uh, dictate, um, or even data, like it, you look at their traffic and it says that you should be doing this, but um, they just want you to do it the way they want to. And it could be, um, uh, you know, a little a bruise to the ego, but you gotta have to kind of separate that, right? Cause you're, you're you, if you get into this because you're passionate about it, you have an emotional bond as much as you try to distance yourself from that um so when they insult the work or or tell you you have to do it a certain way you can kind of go oh this this is a bummer right but um uh it, i think it's it's our job to educate and try to help um uh, like tracy said to or i mean sorry uh, kirsten said um you have to listen to where they're coming from right and sometimes 
uh, hearing why they want you to do something a certain way can can be uh, you know uh, helpful in that way because you're you go oh I guess I didn't think of it that way but um, yeah I'm sorry that was a roundabout answer. No, that's great. I, thank you very much. And and Cesar, how about you? Yeah, head. I think uh, a lot of people think of uh, videography, at a, you know, at a personal level and just a smaller scale as a gig based economy, gig based uh, sort of type of work. But ultimately, taking ourselves out of that mentality where it's just a one off deal that I'm doing a, a project for someone or that I'm moving on to the next thing, having the ability to build relationships <laughs> with people and the clients and the organizations we work for is so key and has provided us with much more positive work, the ability to expand from our vision, what we've done before to doing something bigger the next time, and then also building on those relationships to support our community and realizing that the impact you're having is much bigger. And so understanding that type of impact you can have provides you with the ability to literally measure what you're doing so that you can show the next client and the next person what you're going to be doing next for them so that it doesn't feel overwhelming for yourself to like say that, that that's it that's the job I have and now I'm out of job for the next three months like that's a pretty scary feeling um, to to feel that way and so have the ability to really plan these things out um, having a team to lean on has been so important for me and the ability to take that leap uh, from back in 2012 when I bought my first DSLR camera. And that was like $5,000 that I didn't have, but I knew were going to yield me to this opportunities that I'm working towards now. And so even looking now at what I'm doing, I'm just amazed how possible it was. And it couldn't be possible if it weren't for the community I'm a part of and the people that I trusted a lot of my effort and work with. So that's, that's, a, that's a big way to make things happen. Yeah. It sounds it's a little bit along those lines of being vulnerable too and asking for help or that support. So I think Definitely. sometimes we all, not just students, are um, hesitant to reach out for that support. Um, there's an interesting question uh, for um, James specifically. Looking back, I mean, you've had a successful 25-year um, career at Pixar, and they asked, you know, had you not reached out to Pixar, could you see your career path looking totally different or would it have been the same? Do you have any like, you know, looking back, do you think possibly could you have gone a whole different way? Would you be writing comic books? <laughs> Potentially, you know, I, I, for instance, it's, it's funny, you know, I, I, I really feel like I've kind of touched upon it that I was, I was born and raised in a place that I didn't feel like really defined who I was and didn't offer me the opportunities that I thought I had in me. Mm -hmm. And I chose to, to take, to take some chances and to try some things and not, and I did a lot of, I did a lot of crazy stuff. I, I drew caricatures at an amusement park in, um, in Illinois, you know, I, you know, did, I, I just did a lot of things and I think it led me to this. And I feel like by, by putting myself out there, I was putting myself in a place of being lucky and having an opportunity like this. And while it may not have been Pixar, which was very fortunate for me, I'm, I'm hopeful that maybe it, it could have been something, you know, equally as satisfying. But I really am a true believer that life is short and don't, you don't have to take the cards you're dealt, but you got to step up and try to change the, the hand that you're, you're dealt. And it's scary. And it's hard work and you're going to get knocked back, but that, that's, that's what you got to do, you know, and you'll be surprised and, and, and don't say no to things that you don't know anything about, you know, like accept them. You're going to be surprised for it. So I think the answer to that question, I don't know, but whatever that opportunity, I would have said yes to it and I would have followed it and I would have hoped for success out of it. And if it didn't, maybe I would have learned something else. Like when I was studying in, in college, computer animation didn't even exist in my head, so. Right, yeah, I think, um, and I think what I hear from students as a college and career counselors sometimes is, you know, they're afraid to take that first step, you know, or, you know, that they might have to be in something for the rest of their lives. And, you know, just all four of you talking, you know, your paths have taken you in a certain way, but you've, you know, you can't really predict that, but you're taking advantage of the opportunities that are given to you. So um, we really appreciate that insight. Um, Nicole, do we have any more time? It looks like we're- I think we're, yeah, I think we're kind of out of time, unfortunately. I know there's a lot of great questions, um, but I, you know, 
Thank you guys all so, thank you panelists so much for speaking here today um, and for participants for asking such great questions. And um, before we end, you know, just make sure um, attendees to complete the, the attendance form if you need to, and um, be sure to check out the next, uh, there's a couple more workshops today and another panel. The next uh, workshop is Your Future Starts Now, Social Justice and Resume Building. Um, and that's um, featuring the executive director and founder of the SoCo Monarch Project. So definitely check that out. You can still register if you haven't already. And um, thank you all again. I'm really happy to have met you and been here today with you.